Hello. So I guess if you're here to hear about JShell, um, the new interactive access to the Java language that will be part of the Java platform starting in JDK 9, you're in the right place. Uh, I'm Robert Field. Uh, I'm the JShell architect and lead engineer. Uh, Oracle says I have to say everything I say could be fiction. So, um, so the things I'm going to talk about are what is JShell? Um, why would anyone be interested in it? And how do you use JShell? Then you get to see JShell in action and have time for questions. And I will take questions as, uh, during the presentation as time allows. Um, starting with what is JShell, but first I want to um, kind of get a sense of how much people know about JShell. So prior to Java Day, who's heard of JShell? Okay, and who's actually used JShell? There, in the last talk I did, quite a few people. Well, I don't know, three or four. Uh, okay, and how many this is this new for? I'm assuming, yes, pretty much all the rest of you. Um, so what is JShell? It's a tool for dynamically interacting with the Java language. Um, you may have heard of REPLs or a read evaluate print loop in other programming languages. So this is a REPL for the Java language. Most REPLs are in what's called dynamic languages. So the idea is basically you type in a snippet of Java code and immediately see the results of that snippet of code. Um, and we'll get into what that means, of course. Um, JShell is, uh, will be part of the Java platform. Uh, it is actually in early access of JDK 9. It's there as part of the platform. And as significantly, it's deeply built on top of the platform, which means it's completely consistent with and will stay current with the platform. Um, so because it's, it's far easier to show a tool, and that's probably what most people will use, what I'll be talking about is the JShell tool. Um, but JShell is actually a, an architecture with an API that allows any tool to take the um, Java snippet evaluation mechanism and add it to your tool, whether, you, whether it is a, your idea of what a uh, REPL should look like or whether it's integrating that functionality to control other tools. Um, I'll be doing another talk tomorrow to get into the get into the API, and this talk will be about the tool itself. It's important to talk about what JSL is not, because uh, once I start talking about JSL, people think it is or want it to be something different than what it is. It's not a new language. The whole point of JSL is interactive access to pure Java code. So there's no new syntax, in fact, Every, everything you can type to JShell is a valid production in the Java language specification. And it's not a replacement for the compiler. The compiler is for designing for, designed for compiling programs. Um, and JShell is for exploring. Um, it's also, anytime you have a, a tool for programming is really tempting. Well, we add this and this and this, and pretty soon you have an IDE. The idea of this tool is very focused. Uh, one of the aspects of having an IDE, I mean, having an API for JShell is we're very keen to have um, this functionality as part of IDEs. So on to why. Um, so kind of the first perspective we want to take on why is who would be interested. So for one, uh, for people who are learning the Java language or learning programming for the first time at all, um, 
it, it allows you to start by just the expressions in the Java language and understanding what they mean before what you currently have to do is type in a, define a class and define a method and do some imports and so forth. You have to do some very complex things uh, before you can write your first Java program. It's the way you can type in the simplest expression and immediately get feedback. And immediate feedback is really critical for education. So th the other thing is we're all newbies at kind of over and over again. When we look at a new API, when a new API gets introduced to the language, or when new language features get introduced. So in that case, it's a great way to learn about um, those new APIs or language features. And we'll, you'll be able to use the new APIs and language features because it, stays, it is part of the platform and stays current with the platform. Um, and then ongoing, what it's, what it's good for is prototyping. You have some complex piece of code. You can, you can play with that code, looking at it at any granularity you want to see if it's functioning the way you intend and build it up from there. So if you want to explore um, in Java without JShell, you basically you're stuck in the edit, compile, execute model. You write a whole class with imports, with a main method, and then you cycle through the process of editing it, compiling it, executing it. Whether you use an ID or not, your, your model is still that cycle. So for example, let's say you're writing some code and you want to know the difference between how right shift and unsigned right shift affect negative numbers. Basically, you want to know the value of those two expressions um, to, s to be able to write your code. Well, this is what we'd have to do. We'd have to write a whole program that have th has those expressions embedded in it. Uh, everything, basically, I'm going to represent everything the user, you, type in black bold and the responses in blue. So you type in your program, then you tell the compiler to compile it. If you're lucky, it will compile. If not, you'll have to cycle back through. Then you execute it. When you do, you, you, you can see what happens with the first uh, signed conversion, but because it's being printed in, in, in decimal, the effect on the unsigned shift is pretty hard to tell. Now you have to go back, edit your program, see what's really going on. Comparatively, uh, using JShell, you just type in the snippets of code you're interested in and immediately see their behavior. So in this case, you would just type the expressions, minus eight, shift two, and then you will see what the value is. You'll note it's also, they're being assigned to temporary variables. Uh, these are just standard Java variables that are being created for you that you can access if you want to do, uh, look at that further. So, okay, and then we look at the unsigned case. We see that it's uh, described in a way that is, it's hard to tell. And we want to be able to print it in octal. Well, then we just print it in octal. So those, the first two basically correspond to all the, everything we wrote uh, previously. And then we can address, it, address the change that easily. Now, now, I said everything was pure Java code and there's no like printf in Java uh, without a system out in front of it. And We'll see in a little while how that plays out. Okay, on to actually using JShell. Um, okay. So all you have to do is type JShell. If you, assuming you have a JDK 9, 
even a JDK9 early access uh, current one, the, the latest one, um, and you're, you're in JShell. And there's two kinds of input that JShell takes. One is these snippets of Java code I was talking about um, that execute or declare things. The other thing is commands for JShell that give you control over how JShell works or displays information about what's going on. Either of these can be tab completed, which you know you want you want brevity because you're experimenting. You don't want to type a lot. So let's see how various snippets. So you want to declare a variable foo of type string. You just type that in. And it gives you feedback saying that you've declared that variable. Um, notice that there's no semicolon on there. The terminal semicolons are done for you automatically. You want to declare a method, same thing. You just type in the method. Notice after that first line, it, it detects that it's not a complete snippet. It isn't a finished method declaration. So it prompts for more input until the whole method is entered. Similarly for classes, interfaces, enums, annotation interfaces. So for this example, we declare an interface that uh, converts a floating point into an int. And just expressions. We, can, we declared that uh, Fibonacci method. We can test it out by just directly calling it. All I have to type is the method call itself. Again, it shows the value and the temporary variable that it creates and what type of object it is. You can also put in statements. In this case, we're using that temporary variable from the previous slide to test and then print its value. And you can do imports. Um, there are some imports declared automatically for you and you can add others and they don't have to be uh, at the beginning of the program. And at some point you decide, oh, I need this import, you just type it in. In fact, the only Java construct that is not allowed in JShell is the package declaration. That's because the whole point of this is all the pieces you're creating get to interact. If they're in separate packages, that doesn't make sense. So some examples, we can use that interface we just declared uh, to declare a lambda um, that converts from floating point to int by rounding. And then we can test out, test that out by using the con convert method on it. And you also get, not only do you get results immediately, you also get errors immediately. So you immediately see the results of uh, trying to do that. And it says, well, you can't convert a float to a double, I mean, a double to a float. Uh, that's a lossy conversion. You can also immediately um, fix that by casting it. You don't have to retype that because there are uh, history-based editing built directly into JShell. Okay, so those were snippets. Those were little pieces of Java code. There are also commands, and the way you tell them apart is commands have a leading slash in them. Um, So commands show state. Uh, they also configure how you display things, what environment uh, things are compiled in, startup, and uh, access to the history of what, what you've typed. Uh, so commands are also tab completable. You can get a list of all of them. Clearly, we're not going to go through all this, but uh, th this shows the short form, single letter form of commands, the full full form including optional arguments 
and a description. So just slash help anytime you want to know what commands there are. Simple example list. So we had typed all those things in in earlier slides. We can do a list and we see all the active um, valid snippets by default. Um, we'll get the difference between wh what's active and valid. So we see them and we also see identifiers which you can refer to uh, to edit them with slash edit or get rid of them with slash drop. You also see it on a backtrace. Okay, you can also query about what variables you defined. So that's going to include you, the ones you've explicitly created as well as the ones that are automatically created for you, the temporary variables. Similarly, there's queries for methods and classes, which includes classes, interface, so forth. So forth. Um, and in JShell, you're exploring, you're not creating programs, but you still want to be able to save your work, come back to where you were exploring before. So you can use the save command for that. Save it to a file, you can exit JShell, type JShell, come back in, open it up, and it will be reread, re-executed, do a list, and it's there. Okay. So I mentioned that there are, I mentioned two things. I mentioned there's some imports already declared for you. And I mentioned this printf. Well, this is why, because there's a startup file. So it declares these imports and it pre-declares this method, which basically is just a mirror for system out printf, so you don't have to type that. Um, how many people think this is just the perfect set of imports that you'd want to use? How many would want to add or modify this list for what you're doing? One person, two people, probably most of you um, at some point if you use this a lot. Um, and that's great because you can um, edit your startup to, to any set of snippets and commands um, with the set start command. You can also save the startup you currently have as a, as a starting point for what you want. Um, so as I said, this can be commands and snippets. So for example, you noticed how it displayed um, the, the value and type and temporary variable and all that information when you entered something. Uh, some people find that very verbose, especially as you go along and get comfortable with it. You can set um, the feedback level in JShell, um, but you would, wouldn't want to do that every time you go in. You can just put that in your startup to configure that. And I mentioned there's, there's command line editing in history. So you can go up and down through the shell, just like in any other shell, go up and down through the shell, hit enter to re-execute something from your history. You can edit those things with Emacs bindings. And you can use tab to complete a snippet or to com complete a command. And you can also look at the argument type. You're typing in a, a method call. You can look at the, the argument types with shift tab. You got, a, you got a snippet that's in an infinite loop or running too long, you can hit control C. So this functionality all is, is all be, uh, based on standard J line. OK, demo. I've got mirroring going, that's not really what I wanted, but um, OK. 
Okay, so you get into J shell by just typing J shell. Okay, let's do a, a simple definition. Can everyone see the bottom of there? Um, so I wanted to find a string S call with whose value is hello. I just type that in, and that's a little too big. You still see that clearly? Yes? Okay. Um, you want to know what the value, I mean, clearly, clearly here we know what the value of s is, but you want to know what the value of a variable is. Type it in and you'll see it. What about this tab completion? What can I do with a string? S dot and hit tab, and it'll show me all the methods that I can do on string. In this case, I'd like the hello to be uppercase. And then I can type part of it to up and hit tab, and it will auto-complete that for me. Um, okay. Okay, so I've talked about how we edit things, but <coughs> um, how do you actually replace some definition? Well, let's, let's type in a uh, method definition. Better if I type correctly. Um, so we want a method will give us, give it an input, it'll give us the half of it back. Okay, hit tab to complete substring because I'm too lazy to type that. Um, and I'll do the substring of, um, sorry, and then I want the length divided by two. And now I've just declared a method. And it can call that method. Well, let's test it out. And, part of, and this is a big part of what, what you can do with this, is you create something you immediately test it out. So let's see if we're getting the results we want. Well, it did give us half, but I wanted the first half. Well, I, can, I could either retype this definition of half. Um, if I did, it would immediately replace the old definition. So the signatures match, the old definition is replaced. But it's a lot easier to just hit up arrow a couple times, get the old definition, and edit it to say I want the first half. And now I want to test it. Again, I can just go up and execute it again. All right, so um, there's time, especially if you're doing exploratory programming, you want to start typing a method uh, kind of like you would if you were like doing it on paper and wind up in the middle of typing it in with calls to methods you haven't declared yet. And that's fully supported in, um, in J shell. So let's say you want a method for determining the volume of a sphere. Um, volume of radius of R. Um, so that we know that's four thirds of pi times, uh, well, the cube, I don't want to have to write that out here. Um, and there's our definition. And what it says is it's added that method. However, you can't actually use it. You can't invoke it um, until you tell me what pi is and until you define this method cube. 
Um, well, what, what's happens if we try that anyhow? Then it gives us a corresponding message saying attempted, you're attempting to call volume, but you haven't declared these yet. Um, so the way to, invo to declare pi is actually to add an import statement for Java lang math. And now let's try it again. Um, and now it says attempted to call it, but you still haven't defined cube. For that, we'll want to declare a method. Cube, the cube of x. And now we can finally call it and get a value. Anybody see what's wrong here? Okay, it's supposed to be four thirds pi of r cubed. Um, and what's not right is that four thirds, if they're both integers, is going to give us integer division. So let's change that to a double and try it again, and we get the result we want. So you can, you can interactively play with your code until it gives you the results you want. Um, any questions about this so far? Yes. Can you kind of scream? <laughs> So if you, if you have a method like this one that has things that are not, or you mean just completely broken method. So if you type in garbage, you know, like um, uh, equals slash plus five, it will give you an error immediately. So, so what this is showing is that was valid syntax that I had, but it, it was, it was referencing things that didn't exist. Invalid syntax, you'll, you immediately get the error because you want to be able to correct the, the syntax error. Yes, you certainly there's, um, there's a slash class path um, command that tells you what class path you want to use. You can use classes from anything. You can, you, you can, in fact, one of the things you probably commonly want to do is you've got a piece of code you're writing, but some aspect of it you want to interact with and try out. You can, you can uh, use slash cat class path to reference your code and call into it interactively. Say again? Okay, <laughs> good question. The question is what happens if we type system exit, then you'll basically lose the execution context you're in. You don't exit, the execution is actually taking place remotely to protect from things like that <laughs> uh, and worse. Um, so you lose your, your state, your, your values, but you don't lose your code. Yeah. I can't hear you. Okay, it's actually compiled. Um, it's compiled on the fly, in fact, using the standard compiler. That's one of the ways I sort of, it's built on top of the platform. Huh? My screen went black, yes. 
If you have questions, raise your hand. I will come to you. There it is. Okay. Um, well, let me. Let's. Well, um, maybe one one more question: uh, Is it possible to use some other syntax uh, different than uh, regular Java, maybe Scala, Groovy, uh, switch syntax in JShell? Okay. The question is: Can you use other languages like Scala and Ruby? So this tool is for the Java language, and as I mentioned, it's built on the Java compiler. So it's not built on the Scala compiler, so it it wouldn't understand any other language. Thank you. Thank you. Last question, then I, I'll do the next uh, demo, and then we can have more time for questions. Thank okay. you for presentation, first of all. And uh, the question is about uh, the roots of the G shell. As I know, I recently uh, um, take uh, some code from J uh, how called it, from uh, from the internet, and uh, there was a Java called Java REPL. I compiled it, and it was absolutely the same thing as uh, J shell. Yeah, that's uh, this. Uh, that's uh, this uh, shell has something common with. Okay, uh, so uh, Java. I'm, I, I'm not. I'm From, not hearing. Yeah, I, talk, I, I talk about uh, GitHub. I take it in the main, possibly in or June. Okay. Uh, the same thing. It is make it makes the same thing. It's uh, also can use uh, as a, a common line. Okay. Tool. So can I, I? I'm not hearing most of what you're saying. I think the question is, aren't there uh, previous tools that do do similar things that have been around? And there there have been ones for a while, and they were always approximations. Um, they didn't quite do the full Java language, um, and they didn't do it quite semantically uh, correctly because they weren't built on the platform, and they weren't in the platform. And uh, the history of all the ones that I know about is because they basically were all handcrafted rather than an integral part of the platform is they basically decayed over time and became you know, stopped having new features. I mean, as the Java language and APIs have um, have continued to grow and expand, and they basically didn't stay current with them, and didn't, and were never quite accurate. Um, does that answer your question? Okay. Uh, so I have. All right, let's see if I have time for this. Um, so this is, people have asked me like, well, how do you do this? You know, is this really useful in the real world? Well, someone just reported a bug in J shell. Like I said, I built it on the platform and I used as little as possible that was handcrafted. And one of the handcrafted things was how it deals with imports, because I needed information I couldn't get from the compiler APIs. Um, so sure enough, there's a bug in how I do that. And I use the, use the pattern uh, mechanism. So, and the, the problem is if you do an import and put spaces in front of the, the, in front of the dots, um, you don't get the right result. So I can just, throw this piece of, of pattern definition into, into J shell, and we've now defined that import, and we can play with it. I don't think I'll have time to do this full demo, but um, we can do things. OK. Um, it's kind of wrapped off the screen for me. Um, so we can import pattern. Um, and we can do a test. We can say, does import java, oops, java.lang.star dot dot uh, match? Well, actually, what we got back there was an instance of matcher. Um, 
we want to uh, look at what matches. So I can use tab to go, what, what can I do on matcher? I actually want to do a query on whether it matches. So um, it says, yeah, that matches. All right, well, what about with that case that I was just talking about, um, where there's a space in front of the dot? And I'll just do that query for matches now. Sure enough, that doesn't match my pattern. Um, I don't. I don't think there's enough time to to do the rest of this demo. So I'll just. I think I'll switch to, to questions. If there's more questions. Yeah. And actually, there's a couple more slides too. Oh, uh, sorry. Question. Um, for example, is it? Uh, let's imagine we have a server, and on this server we have a deployed application. Is it possible with help of JShell connect to this uh, server, to this context, and execute some method in this uh, server? And, I don't know, probably fix bug in production, something like that. <laughs> Why not? Okay. I couldn't, I, I couldn't parse most of that. Um, did someone... So, so yes, so the question is, is it possible to connect to remote server on which uh, our application is deployed? Okay, the question see is... See the context, uh, see the... And uh, to get access to our classes, methods, variables, and, I don't know, change some values. Okay, so the, I think the, the question is about attaching to long-running processes like a remote server and being able to interact with them. Um, Th that functionality is not in there now, and the potential there's potential to be able to do that. Um, probably the safer way to do that is if those services can be are things that can be talked to by a remote process. You can interact with that way um, by by typing in the expressions. But you could. Um, it would be possible for this technology to do that. Um, another question? And it's hard for me to hear, so. So you said that uh, this uh, REPL uh, was built on top of platform, but uh, what really do you use to compile the code? Compiler IP or something else probably? Okay, so I actually be focusing on the, um, the implementation, the architecture, and the API in the talk that I'm giving tomorrow. Uh, but, but the standard Java C compiler has a compiler API. And I go through that. Hmm? Hello? Uh, could you put an inner class, static inner class whatsoever inside JShell? Yes, yeah, so you can, oh, uh, yes, yeah, so you, can, you can define, anything you can define in Java, you can define in this. Um, to have some context, effectively what you're doing is it's wrapping it in a manufactured static class to put it in. And anything in there, anything you can put in there, you can. Um, uh, I should I should do this part of the talk, which is basically this is this is going to be part of it's actually already in JDK nine, which is coming out circa. This is part of that fiction. Um, in, we don't really know, but in September of next year, uh, you can download everything for that early access now, and it already has JShell in it, in the JDK nine. Java. Net. Um, the source code is in the source code. It's all open source, um, all available to be looked at. This is an open JDK project, um, and it, the code name for the JDK project is Kula, and it has an official JEP uh, 222. Um, so tomorrow I'll be talking about the architecture and the API of it. Basically, how can you use this 
uh, most importantly, how can you use this to add uh, this kind of functionality to a tool, which might be one way to do a server type thing, too. Um, and I want to talk about the team briefly. So the engineering team is myself and Jan Lahoda. Uh, we also have uh, a lot of help from uh, an open JDK committer, Shinya Yoshida, and you potentially. So we really do, we believe in open source. Um, tester was Andre, and a lot of, a lot of uh, cheerleaders and advisors and reviewers, both inside and outside of Oracle. Um, all right, do we have any time for more questions or? Hi, um, sorry. Uh, how would the look like uh, the output of runtime exception in the G shell? The up, what is, the, what does what output look like? Uh, if runtime exception happen in G shell, how would it look like? Oh, in the in the example I was just yeah, doing. Yeah, yeah, please. Um, it would look like uh, it, like any any other print, basically. Um, okay, you want to divide by zero, so int x equals seven uh, x divided by zero. And uh, note the really interesting looking location there. And if we do a list, note, remember the 28. Um, we just changed that part of it, so that doesn't quite match. Never mind. But uh, be, until we changed that piece, those matched up. So basically, the the ID numbers correspond to the um, to what you see in a trace back. Other questions? Uh, is it possible to write uh, some uh, complex uh, program uh, in text file and evaluate it using J shell? And in that case, uh, how would it perform comparing to Groovy, for example? What, what performance? So what would the performance be? The uh, execution yeah. performance? Yeah, of some uh, uh, more or less complex program. For example, several oh. thousand uh, lines of code. Okay, so the, the code actually gets compiled into bytecodes, and the bytecodes get, again, I want consistency with the platform, and the, and the platform executes on, the, on a JVM, so this executes on a JVM. The, the performance, the, there would be ex some extra space footprint because of things it gets wrapped in, but execution performance should be identical modulo small per perturbations from how it's laid out and stuff like that. Uh, I have one more question. A part of methods of string contains just open uh, brackets. It's bug or feature? Uh, I mean, when you show a list of available methods for string, uh, it contains just open uh, brackets. Uh, if you just uh, tap, write some string and tap, just write string dot and tabulation, it show available methods, yes? Oh, okay. So when 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 we did something like s dot yeah and substring, so I do tab and it completes yeah, it. If, yeah, yeah. If and I do, here I just if I do shift tab now, it'll show you the possible completions. Ah, so if you have just open uh, brackets, it means we have two or three uh, params, yeah. Yeah. Here there's yeah there's two diff there's two options. Uh -huh. right? Okay. Thank you. That time? All right. Thank you.